to uh, read three scriptures this morning and then connect them by God's grace. <clears throat> Again, can you hear me? Can you? Praise God. <clears throat> I said I wanted to read three scriptures this morning and connect them as you're turning to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, and then we'll turn to 1 Corinthians. And as you're turning, I want to wish everyone a happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are here and to all the children who are here whose fathers, um, whether you're, they're here uh, physically or in heaven. Uh, one thing I want to say that uh, we all have a heavenly father. And that's one of the greatest things that all of us can know. We have a perfect heavenly father. We have a perfect heavenly father. Praise God. <clears throat> Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Skip to verse 27. And God created man in his own image. And the image of God created he him. Verse 28. God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Turn with me, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Last verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Father, this morning, we're so thankful for allowing us to come before you. We thank you for the privilege that you have given us to come to you. And this morning, we pray for the word of God that is spoken. Lord, may the word come forth with power, anointing, grace, Lord, I pray that, the, that your word would speak into the spirit of your people and your servant this morning. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to stick very closely to the script. <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> this morning, we read three scriptures. <clears throat> Three selective scriptures. The Bible calls us in, in the New Testament and in the Old to honor our father and mother. And that is ordained by the scriptures. And so that is not meant for one day of the year, as we all know. But that is an ordination that God has commanded all his people. But in terms of the world as they look into this day and a set apart this day for Father's Day, we want to thank God for all the wonderful fathers that God has placed among us. And as I thought about this morning, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to think, and I told one sister, I said, I thought about your dad this morning, Pastor K.J. Joseph who is probably one of the oldest fathers here. I think about our Georgian, who is in New Jersey, who is not here. I think about our Sakriachan, and then I do think about my own father, who is here this morning with us. And I think about all the other fathers among us who love their children, who provide for their children, and yet there are also spiritual fathers among us. And I'm thankful to God for all our spiritual fathers this morning. Coming to the text that has come to us, the selected three scriptures that I brought to you this morning gives us the understanding from the word of God that three fathers are there in the Bible. Three sets of fathers are given to us. And I want to start with the most important one first so that we have the right grasp. Grace be unto you and peace from God. But 
But he didn't end there. Rather, Paul adds that dimension of God, that dimension of the fatherhood of God into the writings. And in the New Testament, if you look at every epistle that has been written by the apostle, I went through it yesterday and I just wanted to confirm. Every single epistle that has been written by the hand of Paul brings together that concept of the fatherhood of God and he has it in his salutatory writing and he says, grace be unto you and peace, not just from God, but from God our Father. So in the beginning of his writings, every single epistle is beginning to expound to us the very nature of who God is, which Christ himself has manifested to the world that says, my God, that our God is a father. Amen. Hallelujah. What a beautiful thing. Amen. What a beautiful thing. With that said, I want to say one thing that may look out of place. That is, after God, after God, I believe, and this may be personal, the scriptures give us a, a, a indirect, uh, a point to us indirectly, that after God, the most honorable person on the earth is a mother. Moms have that in have that instinct, that inordinate instinct of like God the Father. And that's why I said, after God on this earth, I believe the most honorable person in this world that is given honor through the scriptures and within our own cultures is a mom. But yet today being Father's Day, I want us to focus on the theme of fatherhood. And I want you to know that the Old Testament, the fatherhood of God was interspersed for Israel. Deuteronomy 129 says, There you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries a son all the way you went until you reached this place. Moses establishes that the God is our father. Isaiah speaks into it and says, but now, O oh God, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hands. Once again, establishing that God is a father. Isaiah 63, 16 says, You, O Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. From of old is your name. My friends, we have a Father that has been given to us, even in the very Old Testament, to show forth the nature of who God is. And come to the New Testament. It is in the New Testament the highlight of the fatherhood of God and it shifts from being a minor doctrine if I could say so into the from the Old Testament to a major one in the New Testament that is promoted and and and, and, and exalted by the by our very Lord himself for Jesus Christ the Son of God is the perfect revelation of God the Father of his character of his power and his plans for humanity as we read in Hebrews chapter 1 in the Gospels, Jesus primarily relates to God as the Father and their relationship is highlighted in the book of John. Do you know that in the, all the Old Testament, there's only 17 times, I'm sorry, 19 times. But in the New Testament, oh my goodness, it is so powerfully endorsed more than 107 times where God is establishes where Jesus says he's the son of God or the fatherhood of God is established. The Sermon on the Mount, the very first message that our Lord speaks, speaks and brings to us the understanding of how all of us can call unto God as our father, our father who art in heaven. Hallelujah. But this morning, as we consider the fatherhood of God, I want to bring the highlight 
of this fatherhood of God that the gospel and the epistles brings to us. And that is number one, we have one, as I said to you, the heavenly father and that heavenly father, the gospels and the epistles highlight for us the love of this great father. And that love is manifested as we see from the epistles, even our, the apostle of John, the apostle of love brings to us that very beautiful words from 1 John chapter 3 that says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon me that we should be called the sons of God. Oh, behold, what manner of love. When you think of the Heavenly Father, the scriptures and Jesus wants you to understand that behold, what manner of love of love the Father has bestowed upon us. What is this manner that Jesus is, or that the scriptures relate us to? The lavishing love of God, as the NIV puts it, is giving us to understand that it is the manner of love that Jesus put forth on the cross, gave us, gave us that pr prodigious privilege to become the sons of my friends, it's the heavenly father, the fatherhood of God, the lavishing love of the father has given us that privilege, that extraordinary privilege of sonship, that privilege of sonship that we have received to be associated with God. That name that says we are the sons of God. Could we get any closer to that image? Oh my goodness, the lavishing love of God brought us who were far away as close as we could which is says he attached his name to us that said we have become the sons of God behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God the manner of love the manner of love Jesus was the demonstration of God's love for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, what beautiful. For God so, can anyone define that soul? Can anyone put a measure to that soul that God so loved the world? It was Martin Luther who said, oh, that is the library in a line. He said it's a volume in a verse. It's an oceans in a droplet that words of God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When you think of the fatherhood of God, God wants you and I to understand the manner of love, the manner of love that God gave and lavished upon us was set in the mountain of Calvary for the world to see, oh, that we will behold the manner of love this morning. Amen. The manner of God's love. And as you consider the manner of God's love, I want to put before you three words that this morning that the fatherhood of God, that as you consider the manner of love, this morning I want to put three words so that as you leave here, you would see one, the manner of the father's love is immeasurable. Ephesians 3.18, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The manner of God's love or the Father's love is immeasurable. The measure of the Father's love this morning as you look at Calvary, it is a demonstration and an immeasurable love. The manner of God's or Father's love is not only immeasurable, it is unconditional. Romans 5, 6, 8. 
you see, just at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, some might possibly dare to die. Oh, but listen, but God, but God, but God demonstrates his love, his own love for us in this. In while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The immeasurable love of God, the unconditional love of God, the Father's love that is immeasurable, unconditional, and the lastly, the measure of the manner of the Father's love is unceasing. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. Yea, I have loved thee, yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. The fatherhood of God, measuring and looking unto him and understanding the manner of love, that it is immeasurable, unconditional, unceasing, still flowing, still flowing from the mountain of Calvary. Hallelujah. This morning we pray that everyone hearing would know that perfect father, that heavenly father. Hallelujah. Number two, the earthly father. Every person has a heavenly father. And number two, every person has an earthly father. They may be absent. They may not be have taken that role, but they have an earthly father. And I want you to understand, I read that text this morning very specifically because man was created in the image of God and the likeness of God. Every father or the order of God was that man would be created in the image and likeness of God. In the image of God created he him. So powerful those words. And then they were told to go be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. But do you know, Adam understood one thing. He may have failed. And I do think he may have failed. He did fail. But he was the image bearer of God to his generation. He was the image bearer of God to his generation because they, his children did not know that kind of a God. And so when he was created in the image of God, he understood one thing, that he was an image bearer of God. To all our earthly fathers this morning, to all our earthly fathers this morning, it's a very sobering word that we are created to be image bearers of God to our children. We are called to be image bearers of God to our children. So God would have an image bearer for every child on the face of the earth. Every father has to take that understanding and process that, that in the role of a father, I am the image bearer of God. Whether I acknowledge it or not, God linked himself to Adam. And it was that linking that caused him to understand. And yes, my friends, sin marred that image for Adam and all the children. But the order is still there that the image of whatever wonderful thing that you see in your father came from that heavenly father. The image of the heavenly father is transferred to that earthly father in, the basic, in that basic setting. I want to finish quickly. because, <clears throat> And in that process of that earthly father, every earthly father has five responsibilities. Protection, provision, nurturing, training, and guidance. And that is meant for the physical, for the spiritual, for the emotional 
being of that child. That the physical, the spiritual, the emotional well-being of that child is given in the father's role and responsibility to protect, to bring the provision, to the nurturing, the training, and the guidance. With all that, we know that earthly fathers are imperfect. We are imperfect. Earthly fathers are imperfect. Only our heavenly father is perfect and all of us have a heavenly father. And all of us has, has a heavenly father and that heavenly father has given us someone the Holy Spirit to aid us in this process to become a good earthly father. Amen. And the earthly father stands looking up, reaching to the heavens so that he may become that image bearer of God. Perhaps today your father is not here. Perhaps he's gone on to be with the Lord. Perhaps your earthly father never gave you that perfect role model. But I want to tell you one thing. God tells us that we have to honor our father and our mother. And that, the Bible says, it's a command, honor them, that it may be well with you and it, that you may be well with you and that you will have a long life. That God invoked a promise into that. That when we honor our parents, that it will be well with you. It will be well with you. That when you honor your parents, and I want to tell you, it is not, there is no qualifier to it. There is no qualifier to it. The qualification is not that it is worthy of honor. But the Bible says honor. The Bible says honor. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy for us. But I want to tell you that the scripture says we must honor. It may be well with you. So that it may be well with you. And so this morning, everyone hearing this word, I pray that the Lord will give you that strength to honor them. To honor them. One more thing about this. Every God-established order in this world is being attacked. Every God-established order that is in this world is being attacked under attack please don't be naive the word of God is under attack the family is under attack the fathers are under attack the church is under attack God's people or ministers are under attack friends we ought not to be naive there is a requirement to honor and to pray for our fathers moving forward and I'm almost done we all have a heavenly father we all have an earthly father and now we come to that last text which Apostle Paul has so magnificently set for though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ yet have ye not many fathers for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. I have begotten you through the gospel. A very strange uh, word in sense. It is the mothers that actually begat children. It is the mothers that begat children. But Apostle Paul, hearing from the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and you, we understand that he says, you know, we, we know that he came to Corinth. He stayed there uh, 18 months. We know that he was there for a little bit more longer. And so he has spoken the gospel to them. And he was with them. And he was the first person to preach in Corinth. A group of people got saved. He preaches Jesus Christ of Nazareth and expounding them. them. And therefore, a group of them came to know him. 
And so he writes back to them and he says something very, very powerful, which is logically, medically, it doesn't look, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't fit. Because he says, I have begotten you. I want to read that. In Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. It gives a profound truth and understanding that it is not just mothers scripturally that give us the understanding that because that begat or that will give birth, but rather through Christ Jesus, we can give birth and be spiritual fathers. You have 10,000 instructors. You have so many pastors that visiting pastors that come and go. You have many advisors. You have many people to do. The very word that is used is a word called pedagogi. It is a hired help instructors. But Paul says you have many of these people. But he says, I have begotten you through the gospel. I, and he brings Christ in there. says, in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. And that Christ becomes the focus. The gospel that is the heart of the message becomes the focus. And he says to them, I have become your father. That I am become in Christ Jesus. You have not many fathers. In Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. And so he says to them, hear my voice, respond to me. And he's pleading with them to respond back to him as children. And so we see an emerging truth here that it is every person will have a heavenly father. Every person will have an earthly father. And then Apostle Paul tells us that everyone that has come to Christ will have a spiritual a spiritual father. And not only that, he says, you have not many fathers. So which gives the plural understanding to us that says, there are spiritual fathers. Spiritual fathers. <clears throat> so years ago, I was in a church meeting. <clears throat> and one of the, one of the, one of the fathers in our church was there. And um, so I asked, I said, uh, Chai, why you didn't say anything? I asked him. And he turned around to me and he looked at me and then he said to me, Finni, Devam Elpikyatla Finni Uri. Fini, don't ever say anything that God did not ask you to say. You know, I stood there, my hand, I just felt the Holy Spirit just, just like, it was like an electric shock that went through my system. Spiritual father. I told you before, the earthly father had the important role and the responsibility. There's a role and responsibility to protect, to provide, to nurture, to train, and to guide. When the Lord connected that spiritual father into the Bible, he did not cut off the roles and the responsibilities that associated with it. I hope you understand what I'm saying. That Number one, that the spiritual father has the very same roles, responsibilities that God wants us to submit to our spiritual father. So this morning, as you're here, do you have one? Do you have a spiritual father? Is there someone that you can submit to and as a spiritual father uh, receive correction from and not allow to be hold back that they can speak with conviction into my life. 
That's one. Number two, reflection. Am I becoming? What am I becoming? Am I becoming a spiritual parent for someone else? Have I come to a place where I can become? Because brothers and sisters, church is not a social club. Church is the body of Christ. Church is the extension of God's hand, God's feet, God's heart. And so it is a place to minister in the power and the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so Paul says, though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. Apostle Paul reflects something. As a spiritual father, he makes something very clear about himself. With the help of God, we dare to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. You know we never used flattery, nor did we put a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from people, nor from you or anyone else, even though as apostles of Christ, we could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you. Hear the next words. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. You are witnesses, so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believe. For you know that we dealt with you, hear this, as a father, as a father, as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. The roles, the responsibilities of a spiritual father, Apostle Paul has illustrated for us, 1 Thessalonians chapter two. I'm done. This morning, <clears throat> heavenly father, the manifestation of love on the cross, the roles and responsibilities of an earthly father, of carrying the image bearer for God. To protect, to provide, to nurture, training and guidance. And lastly, the role of a spiritual father. One more thing. The spiritual fathers that bring the manna for us, that bring the honey for us. Brothers, my friends, you don't know the battles that they have gone through to bring you that honey. Samson faced a huge lion and then took the honey out of that lion and brought it to his father and mother, but his father and mother never knew where it came from. This morning, pray for our spiritual fathers among us. Pray for our spiritual fathers among us because we don't know the struggles. We don't know the adversity. We don't know their infirmity. We don't know their challenges. And this morning, the church of Jesus Christ has a tall order to remember. May the Lord bless you.